was giving us a lot of traction. And I, upon analyzing the problem of the EB2 and EB3 backlog, and I think a lot of people understand what that means if yes. they're in these immigration situations, but there's different categories of employment-based immigration. And uh, based upon what category you lie within, you have a certain priority for being able to apply for a green card. So people from India or China who are in either third category, which is specialty occupation category, somebody with a bachelor's degree, and they're able to uh, work, for example, in a technology related field or engineering, for example, they would be an EB3 category. And then once they have either five years of professional experience or an advanced degree, such as a master's degree or some kind of professional degree, then they're able to apply within the EB2 category, which theoretically is supposed to be faster than the EB3 category, but that's not always the case. And then there is also a very limited category of individuals who may apply within the EB1 category, which is reserved for three types of professionals, those who have extraordinary ability, those who are outstanding professors and researchers, and thirdly, international managers and executives or multinational company managers or, and executives. My perspective on this was just essentially most of the uh, individuals, and this is maybe like 10 years or 12 years ago this, by now, most of the people who were facing these dilemmas were individuals who um, were working in either engineering, technology spaces, and for the most part, the solutions that were reserved in the EB1 category such that they can get out of these EB2 and EB3 backlogs were requiring one to have, or the thought was that they required one to have a PhD or you know, publications and these like really academic credentials. And that was true mainly for EB1A, and which is the extraordinary ability, and EB1B, which is for outstanding researchers and professors. And then the only EB1 category, so the only way that anybody could really get out of this backlog would, and this is what they would do. And in fact, the one of the first uh, EB1A cases that I took was a situation where an individual was on uh, an L1A and they also had an H1B, uh, I'm sorry, an L1A and they also had an I-140 approved in a lower category. And they were, I'm sorry, they had an H-1B and an I-140 in a lower category, so they're in a backlog. And they decided to go to India at the upon an agreement they made with their company to work for one year in India as a manager uh, of a functional manager, essentially. They could return to the United States on an L-1A, work for that company for another two years, which was their agreement they made with the employer. And